drive shave. Whoa. Getting water everywhere. A little bit of gel. Look, I, I, I figured out in van life, if you look clean, then you are clean. I ain't getting intimate with anybody. Nobody is running around hugging me so they're not smelling what's going on in my armpits or wherever. So who cares? As long as you look clean, you are clean. That's the van life way. The only thing that's gonna give me away for not being clean is my dirty knees from being on the floor. Now that I got the new mats, this should be a little bit easier, but yep, that's how you tell you live in a van. <laughs> Whatever, I don't care. I used to care about that stuff, but not anymore. I should seriously be a salesman for these <laughs> little foldable things. Every time I'm at a laundromat, I seem to have a great big discussion about how cool these things are for folding your laundry. Oh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, one second. The little shirt folders. I seriously could probably make a hundred bucks at every single laundromat from the people in there that watch me use it that are like, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> like sometimes I feel like that, that Tupperware, you know that Tupperware? The, uh, that little plastic tub stuff. I feel like a salesman for that. Or like an Avon. I don't even know why. The Avon lady. Always selling, selling, selling. I've done something for the first time in my life on this trip. And that's discover a new word for places. I've been calling everything out here cute. I'm a dude. Are dudes even supposed to say cute? Maybe when it comes to a puppy or a girl but I've been saying cute when it comes to all these towns. And it's not my fault. Look at these places. They're just downright cute. And well, my van, my van's got a problem. Oh, that ain't good. The back of my van squeaks. Last time that happened, it was just it was just my leaf springs. Um, it was just something inside the stack here, I believe. I don't think it was in any of the bushings and stuff in the back. Those shackles are brand new. Ah, it's so annoying. <laughs> Super annoying. Did you hear the squeak? It was squeaky, 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 squeaky. <laughs> don't judge me, bro. Look at the look on his face. <laughs> why, you gotta, why you gotta be like that, buddy? I looked up that brewery in town. They're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. <laughs> Looks like the good old Timmy's coffee's gonna have to do. You see this weather out here? This is more beer weather than coffee weather. When you're undecisive on the road and you don't know which way to go, you just get in your van and you go. You crank the tunes up, you enjoy the nice sunny day and hopefully the road takes you to somewhere epic. It turned out today that no matter where I drove, the road ended up back to where we started. <laughs> I don't know, we drove through a few towns along the way, but for some weird reason, the town of Sussex just sucked me right back in. But that's alright, we had a fun day in the countryside, seeing some really cute farms and some small towns. Some of these small towns in New Brunswick feel like they've been lost in time. I have no idea what the name of this town is. Huh. I got no idea. The pantry, uh, oh, this post office, Pet Kodiak. Petit, P-E-T-I-T, -E Kodiak, Petit Kodiak, <laughs> whatever. Let me find another sign here. Petit Kodiak, P-E-T-I-T, Kodiak. Pet it, Cody, pet it, ah, uh, whatever. Yeah, a little, a little baby, a little baby town. All right. I'm just to drive in and drive out of these little places. I just seen a sign that there's a town over here called Pleasant Vale. Sounds like a nice place to go visit. Really, Pleasantville was just a road? 
I drove all this way for a... <laughs> Come on! Pleasantville Road. There's a town over here, though, according to that sign. <laughs> Another old bridge. This one's got a wood deck. Check it out, it's wood. <laughs> That was cool. Easy wind. Easy, whoa, easy wind. <laughs> I'm having a weird travel day today. I don't want to sit still. I don't know where I want to go. I don't know what I want to do. You get days like this sometimes. And I know a lot of people on days like today would just like pull the plug on everything, curl up in bed and just be done with it. Something up here sometimes doesn't let me do that. The Bay of Fundy National Park is down that way about 45 minutes from here. Do we go down there? Maybe grab a campground for tonight? Maybe go find somewhere to have a beer? Oh my gosh, that's all I've wanted for the longest time is go sit down and have a beer. <laughs> Seriously, for real. <sighs> Maybe we go do that? Just see all the bugs? Look at them all. Get out of here. <laughs> you know your mood for the day changes when you're gonna stop and buy some firewood. It is so cheap. In BC, these would be like 10 bucks easy peasy. So five bucks for a bundle of firewood. And let's just grab any old bundle. Let's go. You know, just in case, just in case, you know, we need to have a campfire. I decided we're going to head down into the Bay of Fundy National Park. And these bugs are getting pretty bad. We're going to go to the Bay of Fundy National Park. Crozy, we're going to go to the Bay of Fundy National Park. We got a park pass. We got a park pass. We got a park pass. Park pass is still good till August, buddy, 2022. I'm going to hold on to the park pass. Okay, we'll hang the park pass on you. So when they say... You got a park pass? I'm like, yep, he's the park pass keeper. I can't believe diamonds so close. And I am going to take a trail in the world. But I go love you. Yeah, I'm going to love you. Hello, park pay booth. I'll give you the world of what I've got. Fans and fans, baby, I have not. It's going to love you. We need gas, some fears. There's a brewery back there. Do we go have a beer? We're in a little town called Elma. I've been through all this area before when I did my cross Canada trip in 2019 or something like that. And I've been to this town here, but there's a little brewery back there that my buddy Andy said I should go to. So do we go to the brewery by ourselves? Is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we might get a campground in uh, the Fundy National Park tonight. I think that might be the plan, which is right here. Why am I having such a hard time making decisions today? <laughs> Seriously. There's the brewery right there. When you're in a national park, pay for camping. Um, it's off season rates right now, so it wasn't too bad at all. Sorry, let's go find our spot. We're in spot 90. Seven, eighty-nine, number ninety.
I'm sorry, bundle of firewood, but today, today is not your day. I got myself a campground here in the Fundy National Park, and because it's off season, the rates are a lot cheaper. Uh, regular campgrounds are $20. Campgrounds with electricity and power. Um, yep, plugging in, and it even has water. Where is it here? Water. Hey, yo. Campgrounds with the hookups, 27 bucks. <laughs> Pretty good price. So I ended up grabbing one with hookups. This is extremely rare for me, but I figured I'm gonna take this chance because the rates are so cheap and top everything up. Top up my batteries for my chainsaw, batteries for all my drills, both my Jackery batteries, top them right up. My van is at 100% because we did a fair amount of driving today, but sometimes to spend the extra, what? It was $7 extra to make sure every battery in my van is topped up is a little bit worth it. Brand new power plug for the new Jackery. Hasn't even been used yet. Let's do it. The new Jackery 2000. Ugh, I think it's just about dead. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to a campground and plugging in sometimes, especially if you're in a heavily treed area or the weather's just not very nice. That's where having a product like the Jackery 2000 Pro comes in because you can plug this thing into the wall. You can plug it into your cigarette lighter when you drive or you can throw out the monster amount of 1200 watts of foldable solar. I made a whole video on this thing, go back and check it out. These batteries are incredible. I've been using the little one in my van for years and years now. But this 2000 Pro packs 2160 watt hours of power, has a pure sine wave inverter inside and can run just about everything in your van, including a microwave. Go back and watch that video. This thing is awesome, it's got a great screen display and plugs on the front for just about everything. This isn't the only one, they make a little one too. I'll leave the links down below. Got everything charging over here, got my Ryobi batteries charging, my big Jackery's charging, it's at 55% already. It's got an hour and a half left. We're gonna go have ourselves a shower. You okay in here, buddy? A lot of times when you're on the road, You'll stop at a truck stop for a 10 or 13 or $15 shower. 27 bucks here and I can have a shower tonight before bed. Put my brand newly clean bedding on there and then get up in the morning, have myself another shower if I want to. Eh, sometimes campgrounds are 100% worth it. And it's also nice because tonight I rented my own piece of land. That little square piece of land that we're on is mine tonight nobody's gonna bother me i'm over there by myself and campgrounds offer that piece of kind of peace of mind a little bit knowing that you're gonna sleep good tonight knowing that you're allowed to park there and also that you know that's my piece of dirt tonight Excuse me. Sometimes when you go to these places, they got the push button one that stops like every 30 seconds and you get a the whole shower. <laughs> Not this time, baby. Oh, my knees are gonna need some of this. This new little lunchbox shower kit I got worked out pretty good. Freaking chipmunks are just super loud around here. Oh, life on the road, man. <laughs> it's a wild adventure, that's for sure. Even just like the simplest things in life, like having a shower, can be so, so satisfying. I never remember ever getting clean to go to work or anything like that in my previous life be this fulfilling. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <sighs> it's not very often living in a van you get to curl up in your bed at night in clean bedding while you're clean those two things don't line up very often when both you guys are spotlessly clean that's a ton of arugula on the top there Hold her in there. Mm. 
All right, I think we're good here. Ooh, look at the browning on those. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh does that a cypress smell good. So the rice I'm using this time is, um, got it at Walmart, and this is uh, Caribbean style. It smells really good. Let's throw some sesame seeds on the top. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> if I had an Instagram, that would be Instagram worthy. It looks Instagram worthy to me anyway. How many of you guys went out and bought this stuff and put it on rice and stuff? Ooh. I'm trying to upload some stuff here to Patreon, but I literally have one bar of 3G. <laughs> All these pictures are just thinking and thinking. There wasn't enough service up there for me to upload that stuff to Patreon or YouTube memberships. <laughs> I've done that a lot in today's video, but definitely a little bit of service to text and me good night. So that was a good thing. Hey, sure, buddy. It's getting a little chilly outside here tonight, so we're gonna go curl up inside the van. <laughs> Everything out here is charged. My big Jackery battery is done. All my Ryobi stuff is charged. All that stuff's only been plugged in for probably two and a half hours and everything's all charging up to date. All three of my Ryobis, which I use for things like my blower and my drill. I have my van plugged into shore power here on the side, just to top up my van batteries. Now I got a ton of power in here. I can smell barbecue. <laughs> uh, a bunch of the camper guys over there have those little Weber ones, the little Weber barbecues. And I think that's something I would like to put in the ambulance build when I finish that one off is to have a barbecue because tonight it would have been nice to have like just some just some grilled veggies and stuff like that instead of just doing them on the frying pan. And also barbecue would be good out here if I want to make myself a nice big fat steak. Mind you, the cast iron pan makes a damn good steak too. I got to put all my bedding and stuff on here. Ugh. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> I am definitely having a day for sure. One of those days where I literally should have just parked it, sat still, not moved anywhere. and But it was so hard when you have a day that was as pretty as it was out there today. Nice and warm. It was like shirt, shorts, and flip-flop weather. And oh, I didn't want to waste it sitting in my van doing nothing. Even though here wanted to do nothing. This thing up here couldn't even make its own mind up today. It didn't know where it wanted to go. Didn't know what it wanted to do. And when... I decided I wanted to do something. My brain's like, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> it was a constant argument <laughs> with myself all day today. And sometimes you do get travel days like that where you kind of want to go one way, but this party wants to go that way. It's a piece you wants to go this way. <sighs> it was frustrating today. And I tried everything. I tried sitting at a brewery and having myself a beer. <clears throat> It just didn't, it didn't shake the vibe. I, I don't know. I'm glad I made the best of it. I'm glad I did a little bit of traveling and a little bit of sightseeing a little bit. I'm glad I tried because sometimes in these days you got to force yourself to do something or you'll just sit around like a bump on a log and not get anything done, you know? So I find sometimes in these days when you're really undecided on which way you want to go, to just force yourself to do something because sometimes those days turn out to be pretty damn epic. And I think my day today was pretty good even though everything in here, just it's ready to shut off. I'm done for the day, my friends. Thanks for, thanks for watching today. Thanks for being here and thanks to everybody who supports us on YouTube memberships and Patreon. 
you guys are literally throwing gas in my gas tank right now. <laughs> I'm super thankful for that. Thank you to everybody who's ever hit the little thanks button that's right below my videos. I really appreciate that stuff. All that stuff I'm just throwing in the gas tank right now so we can keep moving. So we can keep making videos. Um, I, I, when I left St. Martin's today and then came here to the Fundy Park, we did some adventuring in between. I spent $129 in fuel. $120 in fuel. Something like that. That's a lot. That makes these travels insane. So on the days I don't have a video up or the days I'm not filming, I'm sitting still. I'm trying not to move very much just so I can conserve or save some of that money. Anyway, my friends, thanks for riding along on my very undecisive van life day. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a few minutes. That much money and fuel in one day? Could you imagine doing that every single day? There's no way. There's absolutely no way. That's $700 a week in fuel. That's $2,800 a month. That's the cost of renting an apartment downtown Vancouver. But paying for gas and driving around like this and adventuring is way more fun than if I were to rent that damn apartment at the same price. Yeah, I'll pay gas, thanks. <laughs>